Hello everybody, another chilly day in Maryland. I am down in my dungeon and we are finally going to tackle the refilling of the Canon Pro 1000 cartridges. We're going to use two methods, so we'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. If this is the first time you land in this channel, you're obviously interested in photo printing at home, and if that is the case, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss anything that we upload. We have here, due to the graciousness of one of my viewers who sent me a whole set of empties all the way from Australia, I have a matte black cart. I chose this one on purpose because this is the one most likely to cause a mess. Matte black is tenacious. We have a preloaded chip here in the proper type of holder. This will replace the one that is empty. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to pry this end cap. This end cap, basically what it does is aligns the card properly to the printer intake stem or spigot. It's also keyed so that you cannot erroneously place it in the wrong position. These keyways here are specific for, in this case, matte black. So we need to make sure that we do not swap accidentally. Do one card at a time, not multiples. Do not remove all of the caps at first. So what you need to do is basically this. If you saw the video by Precision Colors, it's very simple. There are several tabs that you need to pry off. And the way I like to do it is I, just like, I like to just go in through here. There's one located right here, right there. And I like to stick something. He used some Q-tips, but my wife did not have any. So I am stuck using just a little brush. You just gotta keep that pride off so that you'll be able to remove the other one. Otherwise, it just keeps popping back in place and that can be a pain. So as it's doing now. So again, let's put that back in there, like so. And now we're gonna go back and pry this one off. And again, remember, if you get the um, auto reset chips, you only have to perform this action one time. Here's the cap, here's the little tab right here. And it can be a little bit stubborn at first, but keep at it, make sure you don't damage anything. And here we go, it's almost loose. I may look like I'm really applying a lot of pressure, but I'm being very gingerly with this because I don't want to damage it. So here we go, and it's gonna pop off any second now. I have most of the tabs off, here we go. I just didn't want to break anything. So what we have now is the main body of the cartridge. This is the valve. You do not want to damage this. And this is the floating chip. So we're just going to go ahead and remove this one. And I'm just going to use a screwdriver to remove it from the position. And I'm just going to insert the next one, the brand new one. Remember, the chip is facing to the bottom and looking up. So again, this is a floating device. As you can see, it just flows back and forth, and it's self-aligning. Now, it has been recommended that you fill it before you put the cap back on. I don't know why. I guess some people uh, have found it a little bit easier. I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall the cap. We're going to align it, make sure that the chip is not misplaced so that it is still facing the front. You see that? Still facing the front opening. I'm just going to basically force it back in place, like so. And now it is back on. You can hear the uh, little floating chip. Everything is ready to go. So now comes the filling. Now, Precision Colors decided to go 
A very simple route. This is for most people who are not familiar with using syringes or anything of the sort. He preloaded the correct volume of ink to fill one of these carts. Now this cart is bone dry empty. Do not fill a cart that's low because that low cart still has about 15 to 18 ml of ink in it. And if you try to force 82 ml, you're gonna create a positive pressure situation inside. And when you remove that tip, a geyser of ink all over you, all over everything. So do not do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is, as the video indicated, we're gonna remove the cap. As you can see, it has been sealed with aluminum foil. We're gonna pop a slit just so that we can allow ink to pass through. And I like to just make a big hole. I have the cap that they provide you. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it is tight. Make sure that the needle is tight, the refilling tip that is. So now we're going to squeeze. Notice that the air is escaped and the inks are all the way to the top. We're gonna to hold that position. It's a little difficult to do because this is a quite a tight squeeze and very difficult to um, so we're going to go ahead and pull back, create a vacuum. In other words, allow the cart to re-expand. And you're just squeezing and re-expanding. Squeezing and re-expanding. Squeezing and re-expanding. And after we get done with this, I'm going to show you how to do it with the syringe. It's a little bit uh, more what we are used to using. So again, squeeze and re-expand. By re-expand, I mean you allow air to come back into the bottle. Because when we squeeze, we're creating a bit of a positive pressure internally. I'm gonna go ahead with the next cartridge, show you how to extract ink from a 700 ml cartridge. If you choose to go that route, I'm going that route because I want to possibly stay as close as possible to OEM as I can. So I'm squeezing and allowing air to come back. When I allow, when I allow the bottle to re-expand, I'm basically equalizing the internal pressure that I am creating. So we're almost done. Again, this is pretty mess free. And again, if you're not used to using a syringe, this is a very good method to use. And here we go, and we are done. All done. Not a drop was spilled. I was able to inject the whole volume. I think I have maybe half an ml left here. Um, remember, this has 82 ml of ink. Now, I want you to hold the chip holder in place so that it does not jiggle around and just shake it. You should be able to hear ink sloshing around. You need to have an air gap between the top of the cartridge. In other words, there cannot be 100% uh, ink in there. Not all the way to the top. You still have to have a little bit of air left and 80 ml is perfect. That leaves that little air gap in the surface. You do not create an airlock when you try to use it. So this one is done. Let's put this aside. We'll go ahead and bring in the next set of equipment. We'll put this over here. This is the Chroma Optimizer cartridge. It has already been chipped, ready to be filled. We're going to go ahead and prepare the Chroma Optimizer 700 ml cartridge for extracting ink. We're going to take a stubby needle, such as this one. We're going to locate the hole because it's got a double port. There is actually a vent pipe inside that allows air to enter as ink is being drawn out of the other hole. And this 
pipe acts as a agitator and so as air bubbles go in the pipe which has little holes built in all along its length allows air to circulate through the ink and uh, that way it stays suspended. Now when you first attempt to stick this needle in it's going to be a little bit tight to do but you just push it and just force it right in and immediately you get a little bit of chrome optimizer. So you have to be very very careful. The only other thing you could do is drill a hole and literally just pour it out into a like 700 ml bottle. At this point we're going to go ahead and inject our syringe and very carefully tilt it and as you can see I'm able to withdraw chroma optimizer. We're going to get 80 ml not counting a couple of bubbles of air. So as you can see it, this is better done wearing gloves and maybe working over a sink that you don't mind uh, spilling a little bit of ink over. But again, there's really no easy method to aspirate this ink except doing it this way. When you get close to the end, be careful that you do not allow any ink to come out of that other needle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull back a little bit more than I really need, about 82 ml. That's great. We'll pull the needle out, put it aside for now. We'll remove this needle and now the cart can be stored and it will not leak any longer because there is no more uh, air or liquid can enter that, that compartment. So we are ready to go. We'll put this aside. And now I have a slightly different tip. We'll go ahead and push the last little bit of a air out. Let me find my tip right here. We're going to remove this. So this is similar to the tip that Precision Colors provides you. This is really, really tight. Mm, goodness. All righty, we got it. We'll put this aside. We'll insert this tip. And here's what we're going to do just like we did with the bottle. We're going to insert. Now you have two ways of doing it. You can either pull back, create a vacuum. You see that? Creating a vacuum and allow it to come down. Create a vacuum and allow it to come down. Now the other method is cleaner. All you got to do now is just basically throw that bottle out. You're going to get a new bottle when you order a new supply of ink. I have to deal with the chore of washing out these syringes that I'm using. But as you can see, the ink is going in. Just make sure that you are pressing down so that you do not leak ink all over you. Again, this is not supposed to be done, folks. So we are uh, entering uh, areas that are taboo, let's just say. But this provides you with the ability to be able to fill your Proth 1000 cartridges. When you get down to the last few ml, you're going to have to help it. So again, pull back, extract air, push forward, inject liquid, pull back, extract air, forward, inject liquid. We are almost done. If you get to the point where no more can enter, that's it. The cart is full. So let things equalize. See, it's not moving in. It's not pushing it out. At this point, you can go ahead and we are ready to go. Again, make sure that you hear air being sloshed around, and I am. So this cart is ready to go. As you saw, other than the little bit of... Um, chrome optimizer in my hands that could have been ink again this method is cleaner easier to use if you're not experienced with using a syringe otherwise either method will work perfectly well at this point we have now two cards filled I only have 10 more to go so thank you once again for watching 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, refer back to Precision Colors website for their instructions. He goes into detail about other things about refilling these cartridges, the way the Pro 1000 works internally that you may want to go ahead and take a look at. Very informative. And of course, always Precision Colors always comes through with the information. The guy is a genius. So thank you once again. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, I forgot to show you one thing. Everybody must be asking, well, Jose, do these cartridges actually work? Are they recognized by the Pro 1000? As you can see, everything but PhotoCyan is marked as low. I measured them. I weighed them. They have about 10 ml left in them. So let's go ahead and test the one that we just fill with chroma optimizer we'll go ahead and remove it as you can see it tells you exactly how to do it we're going to reinsert the one we just um, loaded with uh, ink and the new chip we'll close the door and we'll wait for it to uh, recognize it says the following used genuine Canon ink tanks were detected PFI 1000 Chroma Optimizer. And as you can see, Chroma Optimizer now is full. So I consider this a total success. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Happy printing, everybody.